So the important thing to know, notice about this first question, what type of an inheritance is shown in this pedigree chart, is that you need to know that the squares correspond to male and that the circles correspond to female. That's the first thing that you need to know about. And after that, uh, you can later determine whether it is an X-linked dominant or Y-linked dominant or recessive. Now the first thing is to say that the most common is X-linked recessive. And that's what the IB loves to test you on, X-linked recessive. This is very common, okay? So if you are completely stumped by these pedigrees, just have a guess of X-linked recessive. If you're, on the other hand, Y-linked is completely, is very, very rare. Y-linked is very rare, and that's because the Y chromosome is such a small chromosome relative to the X chromosome, so it's unlikely that something is going to be just on the Y chromosome. But let's have a look from here. So look, let's see, we can see that the number of people that are affected is 1, 2, 3, 4, and lo and behold, they're all males. So four males are affected. Straight away, you're thinking X-linked recessive, because in the case of a male, they have one X, X chromosome, they have one Y chromosome. So if they have a problem with the X, if they have a problem, such as this red, this red gene on the X, then there won't be another X chromosome available to counteract that. So if we compare that to a female who has two X chromosomes, then they will have, if they were to have one If they were to have one normal, uh, abnormal chromosome here, then they would also have a normal chromosome on the, on the opposing X, X chromosome, uh, which means that they would um, only be a carrier. So this is called a carrier. This is a female carrier. Whereas the one above is a affected male. Okay? Good. So in this case, we're thinking X-linked um, recessive straight away. So the different options that we have, we have X-linked dominant, um, X-linked recessive, as well as Y-linked dominant, Y-linked recessive. So that's at the very bottom, which is a bit cut off in here. But straight away, you get rid of Y-linked dominant and Y-linked um, recessive, because they're, they're, this is not the pattern. This pattern is, is very typical of X-linked recessive. And the reason why that is, because that there's a majority of boys are affected, so boys are affected. Whereas the women, or the females, the females are carriers. Therefore it is um, X-linked recessive. So the second question, which disease is an example of a sex-linked inheritance? And the two examples that they say on the, uh, on the IB biology syllabus, they want you to know about haemophilia mainly. So AIDS, A is incorrect because that is uh, given by HIV or the human immunodeficiency virus. It's a virus, so it's not about an inherited disease. Down syndrome, no, that's incorrect because we're not talking about um, a genetic inherited disease. This is usually a spontaneous mutation. So it just occurs due to random error. Like there's no way that there's usually no way that you can inherit it. Sickle cell anemia is incorrect once again because um, that is due to a, a base substitution. It's caused due to a base substitution mutation. So generally not sex linked. Furthermore, um, if it's sex-linked, it's got to be either on the X or the Y chromosome, in this case the X chromosome, and, and the haemoglobin gene is not on that. So it's not, so the haemoglobin gene is not on X chromosome, so therefore it's not X-linked. So then the final one is correct, we're talking about haemophilia. The majority of boys have it, the majority of boys have it, uh, with, uh, and females are carriers and they're usually affected less, if not at all, as well. 
So the other example that the IB might ask you about is colour blindness. You might know some male friends that um, are actually colour blind. Okay. So our third question, a man of blood group A and a woman of blood group B have a child. If both are heterozygous for the gene, what are the chances of them having a child with blood group B? Important thing to know about this is first of all your ABO blood group, but more important what it means by heterozygous for the gene. Heterozygous means that they are not homozygous, so not homozygous. And if they are homozygous, then that means they've got two of the same alleles. Okay? Good. So, what are our different possible blood groups? So first of all, you've got A. So this could either be... So blood group A, the blood group, so BG, blood group A could either mean that they have... Um, they, they either have AO genotype. Genotype means what kind of alleles they have. Or they could have an AA, because the A is dominant. If someone was to have B blood group, then they would either have the genotype BO or BB. If someone was to have an O phenotype, then they would either they must have OO genotype. And if someone was to have an AB phenotype, then they must have an AB genotype. So each one of these alleles, one is inherited from mum, one is inherited from dad. So in order to answer this question, you just want to draw a Punnett grid. So let's sh let's write out what our genotype for our mum is. So our mum has a blood group of B, but they're heterozygous. So in this case, B O. How about dad? So dad is a blood group A, but is also heterozygous. So therefore, he has a genotype of A O. Okay, so then these are our different possibilities depending on which way they are sorted. So the B goes down and the A goes across. So in this case, it's a 25% chance, or 1 in 4, because there's 4 squares. There's a 1 in 4 chance that the child will have a genotype of AB and a phenotype of blood type AB. How about the next one? AO. Next one? BO. Next one? OO. So now let's look at, back at the question. What are the chances of them having a child with blood group B? So the only one that is child with blood group B is this one over here. So there's a 1 in 4 chance. 1 in 4 chance, which means that it's 25%. Our answer is B. Question number 4, a very similar kind of question. If an organism that is homozygous recessive for a trait is crossed with a heterozygote, what is the chance of getting a homozygous recessive phenotype in the first generation. So once again, let's um, draw these out. So homozygous, recessive, means that they are two of the same. So the two alleles of the same homo -rece homozygous recessive uh, gene. So in this case, let's call the, uh, the genotype II. Okay, so this is II. This means that they have two uh, of the recessive alleles. And because it's recessive, because it's recessive, then you need you need two eyes or two of the alleles before it gets uh, manifested as a phenotype. So if, for example, if there was to be an, a big eye and a little eye, then the phenotype would be of the big eye. Let's bring this back to an example. So let's think about it in terms of blue eyes and brown eyes. So most people think that blue eyes and brown eyes, um, the gene for blue eyes is, let's say it's um, big E. Or E, big E, yeah, big E. So this gives brown eyes. And the gene for blue eyes is little e. But the gene for blue eyes is recessive. 
So in order for to in order for someone to have blue eyes, then their genotype must be little e little e. Blue-eyed phenotype. Phenotype just means the feature, so you can see that they have blue eyes. Whereas if someone had brown eyes, they could either have big E, little e, or they could also have big E, big E. So there's two different options for them to have brown eyes. So if we bring that back to our example here, if an organism that is homozygous recessive for a trait, so let's talk about this trait as having um, blue eyes, is crossed with a heterozygote, what is the chance of getting a homozygous recessive phenotype in the first generation? So let's draw our planet grid again. So homozygous recessive. Homozygous recessive? Homozygous means that there are two copies of that particular allele. So in this case, our recessive uh, phenotype can be our blue eyes. So they have EE -E genotype. EE -E genotype. What is the chance of getting a homozygous, uh, pardon me? So homozygous recessive is crossed with a heterozygote. So heterozygote means not homozygous, which means that it would be big E, Literally. Let's draw a Punnett grid here. And then what's our chance? So in this case, this little e gets broke down, and we have big E, little e, and then have big E, little e, little e, little e, little e, little e. So now let's look at the question. What is the chance of getting a homozygous recessive phenotype in the first generation? Homozygous recessive are, is the little e, little e, little e, little e. So we have two out of four, which means 50%. So therefore our answer is C. Last question, what is a genetic test cross? Well, just to give you a hint, a genetic test cross is actually what we did in our last question here. It's where you cross a homozygous recessive, a known homozygous recessive, with a heterozygote to determine... Um, sorry, scrub that. So it's, t t it's testing a suspected homozygote by crossing it with a known heterozygote. So you have, say in case of um, people, if you were to do a test cross on a person, then someone with blue eyes, Okay, so question five, what is a genetic test cross? So this genetic test cross is actually um, something which is uh, done usually in the animal world. And what happens is that they cross a, um, a known, so if they have a heterozygote, but they're not sure if it's a heterozygote or if it's a homozygote, then they cross that with a known homozygous recessive. Okay? So, they're not sure whether this one is heterozygote or if it's homozygote. So then, say if it was homozygote, say if it was, in our previous example, we talked about um, blue eyes and brown eyes. So say in this case, uh, they, had, they have brown eyes and they're genotype was big E, big E, then if you cross them with a known homozygous recessive, so blue eyes, then all the children would be what? They would all be big E, little e, which means that 100% of the children would be brown eyes. Okay, so whereas if you crossed it with, if you crossed a heterozygote with a known homozygote, So, if you crossed a heterozygote with a known homozygote, then what you would have is you'd have a 50-50 chance. So the first one would be big E, little e. The second one would be little e, little e, like this. So, therefore, you would have a one-to-one -one ratio of brown-eyed, brown to blue-eyed children. Okay, so 
In that case, we know that we're testing a suspected heterozygote, so not a homozygote. Let's get rid of A and C by crossing it with a known homozygous recessive. The answer is D. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.